Winter is upon us as we bid goodbye to rains, landslides, floods and droughts and welcome bright sunny days with cold frosty nights. We will also see tourists descend upon the northeast from all corners of the country and the world. The year is almost at an end. The festive season will begin soon and after the horror of the past two years, 2022 has been a relief to say the least. No one missed the lockdown, right? But if you are in Meghale, this has been anything but a good year. The state has been in constant political flux, dotted by protests, more protests, discontent, disagreement and even more protests. The last week of October also saw one. But was that the last one for the year? Unlikely. The state is heading for elections and with allies ready to grab each other's throats and opposition smelling blood, it will be anything but a smooth ride to the ballot box. And throw in angry discontent youth and you have a tinderbox. I'm Kalyan Deb and here's why Meghalaya is heading towards uncertain times that help no one. December 2019, the Northeast is up in arms against the CAA. Assam is simmering, sometimes burning, and the rest of the Northeast for once is absolutely clear in its stance, no CAA. Meghalaya is no different, and in the wake of the CAA, the Assembly passed a resolution to implement the inner line permit in the state. So far, so good. CM Sangma had spoken against CAA, passed ILP, and in general had people's support. Then the Meghalaya government and the state's residents realized the might of the central government. After the assembly passed the CAA, it should have been straight sailing for the implementation of ILP. And yet, even as recently as September 2022, all we got from CM Sangma was we are pursuing ILP seriously. Really, CM Saab, after all these years, despite being an ally of the BJP, all you could do was pursue it seriously. No sign of implementation. Then came the pandemic and while Meghalaya did relatively better than the rest of the country, the truth is the pandemic broke the state's economy. The state's tourism sector went for a toss for a good two years, 2020 and 2021, and with it went away the biggest source of income. A weak economy coupled with questionable public health only harmed the government's image. But this was nothing compared to what was to follow. For the government at least, the people, we will get to that in a bit. Remember Congress? Yes, that party which was once popular across the Northeast. Yes, that one. Well, there was once upon a time when the party used to exist in the state as an opposition, no less. But then, and sorry for the Game of Thrones reference, winter came for Congress. In one swift move, New Entrant, TMC took 12 of the 17 MLAs of their fold and out came Mukul Sangma, full Phatta poster Nikla hero style. The TMC, which had crushed the mighty BJP in one of the most heated elections in West Bengal, was confident that it could stake a claim in the coming years in the state. This was a real curveball for Sangma. You see, in the Northeast, the non-Congress government does not bother about Congress because, well, everything that went wrong in this region was with the Congress at the helm. But TMC comes with a clean slate and their targeted attacks on corruption hit a chord with the locals, while the government floundered to give an apt response. This is where the biggest challenge lies for the Meghalaya government. You see, over the past year, we at East Mojo have done so many videos on protests in Meghalaya that, well, a part of us wants to thank the Meghalaya government for its inefficiency in dealing with protests, which digital media does not like, YouTube videos, eh? But jokes apart, the truth is, from teachers to vendors to more teachers, youths seeking employment and youths waiting for results, no section has not felt that this government has given them a tough time. 
no amount of discussion and conversations with those protesting will solve what is at stake here. People are angry, teachers are worried about their future and the youths are angrier than ever at both the financial as well as the political situation. And December 2022 will mark three years of inaction on ILP. Does the Meghalaya government genuinely expect that the people will not rise in rage and that the TMC will not fan the anger? No, we are not saying the TMC wants people to be violent. But which opposition party misses a chance to strike at the government when it is struggling? Democracy, right? The TMC under Dr. Mukul Sangma is more than capable of appealing for a change. Usually, with the financial might of the BJP, the NPP could have assured that at least for 2023, it will cross the line easily. But, and we mean no offence here, the alliance between NPP and the BJP is, well, <laughs> messed up, I said, messed up, not, there was no need for censorship here. They fought tooth and nail against each other in Manipur. BJP leaders saying things like, it would have been good had BJP played a bigger role in the Meghalaya government. Although how they think so when they have two MLAs in the state is anyone's guess. The BJP is playing poker right now. If Conrad Sangma emerges victorious, okay, no issues. If Conrad Sangma loses, but BJP wins a few more seats, well, why not? We do not know if they will contest the elections together or not. But for now, what an alliance indeed. And oh, remember the five Congress leaders who did not join TMC? They joined the MDA, of which, yep, the BJP is a part. Officially, Amperin Lingdo and the other four are still with the INC, in alliance with BJP. Oh, Congress, I know it is really hard for many of you to gulp it down. The last week of October was not a good time for Meghale. The attack on non-tribals once again highlighted the precarious position of the non-locals in the state. And while such an attack was condemned by several leaders from across the spectrum and civil society members, in truth, it is never a good sign when poor, helpless people are at the receiving end for something they had nothing to do with. Once again, the government was caught napping and despite attempts at damage control, it was seen as a bureaucratic failure. And even though the police implemented Section 144, protests resurfaced. It is clear that the government is losing the people's support and the opposition could not be happier. The people are fed up and no amount of words seem to be making much of a difference. For now at least, Conrad Sangma in 2021 wanted to take the lion's share of Manipur. Come 2022, he may just realize that Meghalaya might be too late to save. And if it does manage to save his CM ship, well, trust us, he will not have an easy ride. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to East Mojo. For any queries, put them down in the comments section below and press on the bell icon for notifications.